Hi, I wanted to share something with you that uh, took me a little while to figure out that might be helpful to you if you're trying to uh, shell into your pie. So uh, that's one of the first things that I wanted to do because I'm kind of running it headless. Uh, basically, uh, don't have a keyboard and mouse hooked up to it. And uh, so once I got the pie set up and updated and basically uh, uh, enabled uh, a secure shell uh, on the actual host, I wanted to uh, come over here to my Macintosh and then basically I wanted to uh, secure shell in uh, like this after I set up the host in the host file. And uh, this is what will happen the very first time that you try to shell in. Uh, secure shell will of course warn you, show you you've established a connection with the IP and of course being this on a local network I'm pretty sure that that's there's no man in the middle and that's the actual machine, but uh, especially if it wasn't the case, uh, what would you do? How could you verify that this fingerprint is indeed the fingerprint? Uh, and in fact, uh, if you go over to the host, I uh, can show you a couple things that um, will uh, make this a little clearer, but uh, essentially, if you look in the etc secure shell directory you'll see that there are the config files uh, for the uh, server wide configuration and the the uh, daemon configuration and then you have the key pairs the private keys and then the dot pubs the public key uh, and you have the the four different types of key there and so basically if you uh, list those out like in this case if you notice, it's giving us the uh, ECDSA key, uh, public key, fingerprint. So if we uh, do a catalog of that, uh, and let's see here, we got ECD and then the public key. It's not showing us the private again, it's showing us the public key. You'll notice that the key is much longer than the fingerprint. And so how do we get the fingerprint to verify it? Because I'm looking at the key, but that isn't the fingerprint. And so even that didn't tell me that it's okay to, to shell in. And that's, of course, presuming that I have the host right here where I can access it. And maybe I don't because it's, it's a remote host. Uh, so that was kind of where I started with this problem is I wanted to know, how do you really do this? Well, <clears throat> the, uh, the answer is actually... Uh, not too hard, but I'm going to do it in steps. So one thing that you can do here is looking at the uh, key gen. Uh, oh, and, and we have to do this, I believe, as uh, sudo. So we do the uh, key gen and then the listing, and then we tell it the file, and then we're going to give it the exact same uh, file name that we just uh, did which is going to be the uh, same key that it's trying to show us which is the public key and that command on the local host we're on the Pi now remember will actually show us the fingerprint and then we could cut and paste that and then go back and you know if you look here x plus u is the ending of it and if you look here um, again it's uh, x plus u right there and you could manually compare, but you have to compare each and every single character to make sure they're correct, um, which we'll, we'll get to at the end. But uh, basically, that's the only way to do it um, with this command on the, uh, the uh, host, the Pi, the, the server that may be remote. Well, that's kind of inconvenient. Um, so how could you do it from the local host that you're trying to connect from before you've even connected for the first time. And that was a little bit tricky. Well, if you notice, um, there is a, uh, another command here and that we can run from uh, the uh, local host and it's called key scan. Uh, having problems here. Key scan, there it is. And basically, we just tell it the host, and what it's going to do is it's going to print out all of those keys. Um, it print out. See, this is the uh, this is the one. The default. The first one is the default, 
and you'll notice it printed out the whole key and then it has the RSA and then the uh, more advanced uh, uh, other key, the ED25519, uh, which is the uh, elliptical curve key. So basically these are the host keys, but again they're not the fingerprints and what we're looking at here is a fingerprint. So how do we get that fingerprint? Uh, how do we see that from the local host here if we don't have the ability to use this command on the server and get it? And so that proved to be a little bit trickier because of course that file, which required root access to get to, is, uh, well actually it doesn't require root access because it's public, but in any case, that file is on the remote host or the Pi. Well, it turns out that the solution is a little bit easier than I originally thought. So essentially, you can go in here and you can uh, do the, uh, the key scan command. And in fact, um, we're gonna, you can send the whole thing just like you saw all, all of the keys to this, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna limit it to just the one that we want. Uh, well, I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to show you what that does here uh, on the Pi. So that's just the one key. And we didn't have to do that. We could send all of them. But what I'm going to do is pipe the output of that command into, guess what? The keygen command. And we're going to use the same listing. And in this case, however, uh, I'm going to just put the file as a dash because we're going to use the standard input of that uh, key scan command. And lo and behold, what does it give us? It gives us the exact thing we're looking for. So one way we could do this, for example, is we could say no. And then uh, just to start fresh, we can use this command here. And, and then that would give us, because uh, we know it's going to default to that key, that would give us the fingerprint in advance, and then we could secure shell into the Pi, and then there we have them on the same screen in close proximity, and we can verify that they're the same. And that would be, if we type yes, it'll add the key permanently, and then there we are, we're on the Pi, and that's all there is to it. So it wasn't quite as difficult as I thought. Now, if that server is actually remote, there's a little bit more risk here because if it's been uh, set up and you don't have control over it, you could be just now shelling into a man in the middle attack. So really the best way to do this is to grab those keys um, where the server's local with the uh, key scan command directly into your known host file so that the user never even gets that warning to add the key at all. And that would be probably the most secure way. But of course, this being on my local network, um, I, I really didn't even have to worry about any of this, but I just wanted to know how to do it, and now you know how to do it too. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching.